Um, if blacks are holding the priesthood, why was that? I mean, it, there wasn't an issue. When did the issue begin? Well, let's hear a few statements on priesthood uh, that we have from our, from our church leaders. Uh, David O. McKay, uh, 1954, David O. McKay is quoted as saying, There is not now and there never has been a doctrine in this church that the Negroes are under a divine curse. There is no doctrine in the church of any kind pertaining to the Negro. I'm going to repeat that. There is no doctrine in the church of any kind pertaining to the Negro. We believe that we have a scriptural precedence for withholding the priesthood from the Negroes. It is a practice, not a doctrine. And the practice will someday be changed. And, that, and, and that's all there is to it. Uh, President George Albert Smith is also quoted as uh, having said the same thing. Uh, Elder Dallin H. Oaks uh, said in an, in an interview, It is not the pattern of the Lord to give reasons. We can put reasons to the commandments. When we do, we are on our own. Some people put reasons to the ban, and they turned out to be spectacularly wrong. There is a lesson in that. I am referring to reasons given by general authorities and elaborated on by others. The whole set of reasons seem to be unnecessary risk-taking. Let's not make the mistake that's been made in the past here and in other areas trying to put reasons to revelations. The reasons turn out to be man-made to a great extent. Elder Bruce R. McConkie, one of my favorite statements here. Uh, forget everything that I've said or what President Brigham Young or President George Q. Cannon or whoever has said in the days past that is contrary to today's revelation. We spoke with a limited understanding and without the light and knowledge that is now coming to the world. We get our light and truth, <laughs> line upon line, precept upon precept, and uh, we have now had added a new flood of intelligence and light on this particular subject, and it erases all of the darkness and all of the views and all of the thoughts of the past. They just don't matter anymore. So if you're going to study this issue, you've got to forget everything you've heard and start from scratch. And where is the best place to start? Forget the philosophies of men and go straight to the scriptures. There's enough guidance in the scriptures for you to understand this, uh, for us to understand this. Um, it doesn't make a particle of difference what anybody has ever said about the Negro matter before the first day of June of this year, 1978. It is a new day and a new arrangement, and the Lord has now given revelation to shed light into the world on this particular subject. Now, we're going to talk a great deal more about that light, because with that light and that knowledge, that flood, it wasn't just a revelation that reversed the priesthood, but it was a flood of intelligence that came, as Elder McConkie said, that helped correct the views and the thoughts of the past. And the brethren actually did something with that flood. They actually updated our scriptures in 1981. So if you look at an older version of your scriptures and then go to 1981, you've got a newer version with footnotes and word changes to help us to understand the issues that were misunderstood before, give us new guidance. And every single scripture that I could find in the Book of Mormon in Doctrine and Covenants that helped us, that, that we misunderstood regarding this issue, has a footnote giving us new direction. The DNC also has a very heavy emphasis on equality, and I stress this because, again, as you go through looking for reasons for a restriction, the Lord had plenty of opportunities to give one, but we don't see any recorded revelation, any doctrine, any scriptures, any of that.